Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well today down on the bench I have my Kenwood TS440S. It's working fine, nothing wrong with it, but I'm going to install an upgrade. Now the, uh, the TS440 series came with two filters by default um, for uh, the IF chain. You had a 2.3 kilohertz filter for single sideband use and I think it's a 6 kilohertz filter for AM use. Um, but that was it. Well, if you're a CW op, and uh, I do a, a little bit of CW now and then, uh, CW on 2.3 kilohertz is a little bit tough. Stations can be right stacked up next to each other, and you'll hear their, their pitches all up and down, higher pitch, lower pitch, and the one you're wanting to listen to is right in the middle. Um, it can make it difficult to copy, and that's where a narrow CW filter comes in. A CW filter can be 500 hertz um, narrow. Uh, and what I have here is a uh, YK88CN narrow CW filter. I think it's a 250 hertz filter. And I was going to go ahead and install it on my radio, and I thought, you know, there might be a few other people out there that, that might have one of these radios and want to install a filter, and maybe they've been hesitant because... Uh, they're not sure what to do or how to do it or what's involved. So I figured we'd do a little video on how you install the filter in this radio. It's very easy. Um, all you need is a Phillips screwdriver, a soldering iron, and some basic soldering skills and a little bit of patience. So that said, I'm going to move the camera over, grab my screwdriver, and we will get started. All right, we're just going to need a Phillips screwdriver. On the top, we're only going to take off the top of the case because the uh, filters are on this top board here, so it's real easy to get to. So you got one, two, three, four screws on top. You'll have one, two, three on the side, on the side with the handle, and one, two on this side. Once you've got those screws out, this whole top just sort of lifts off. Lift it from the back, slide it out from the front, and there's a little lip edge there. And you can tilt it up and away. Now the speaker wire connects to a little jack right down here. It's the only two pin jack up at this corner of the board, so that just pops out. And then we can put the top case aside. And now we're looking inside the radio. Now if we look right here on the board, you'll see there are two slots marked for filters. One, two. CW filter, single sideband filter. These are the two optional filters you can install on this radio. I think the single sideband filter is a 1.8 kilohertz, which makes it just a little bit narrower. And the CW filter, you have two options. I think one of them is 500 or hertz, and the other one is 250 or 300. It might be labeled 300. Now, this whole board is on a sub-chassis. There's two screws here and here. And if we take those two screws loose, you'll see that this whole sub-chassis lifts up and pivots up. See that? And they do that so that you can get to the uh, um, this other board in here which has one of the VCOs on it, which was useful because uh, this VCO is one of them that you have to get glue out of if you have the dot display problem. Uh, but what we need to do is we need to take this board loose because we're going to have to solder on the bottom of it. Now there's a great many cables and connectors on here. This wire loom is quite intricate and complicated. However, because of it being on this chassis that pivots anyway, all of the wires come up here and they have just enough slack for them to pivot. So what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to turn the radio here. I'll be able to take the screws out that are holding the board in and be able to just lift the entire board carefully up and over 
and then using my third hand suspend it out here in front of the radio and then do the soldering. I won't have to take off all of these wire looms. So that's, uh, that's what we really want to do. Now the board itself is held in with several screws. Two, three, four, five, six, and there might be one in the middle. Seven. Yep. Two, the screws at each corner, about halfway up the board, and one in the off the center of the middle a little bit. Seven screws. And then that whole board will be able to be lifted out, pivoted over, and we'll be able to uh, do the soldering on it. So, myself another cup for the separate screws. Let's get these screws out. Ooh, need a smaller Phillips. These screws have a smaller uh, Phillips head on them. Be careful you don't want to drop a screw down inside there because you'll have to take the board up and or maybe take the bottom cover off if it falls all the way through. My radio has the optional antenna tuner installed. That's what this is over here. It's the antenna tuner. It's motors and gearing on the front. It's a mechanical tuner with the variable capacitors and a, I think a roller inductor and a motor and two motors and a gearing system up here to drive the elements. Actually, it might be a Z-match. I think that there's just two variable caps that are driven by those motors. I'd have to look at the schematic again. Okay. With those screws out, the whole board, as you can see, is loose and just comes up and you can pivot it over like so. Bring in my third hand here to clip onto one of the corners and the board is held for me to do my soldering on. But first I have to put the filter in there. Now the filter has two sets of pins at opposite corners and two ground tabs that fit in there. Um, I believe that they are bi-directional. It doesn't matter if you put it in this way or that way. It's not polarized. But I'm going to put the put it in so that the lettering on the sticker is oriented the same as the lettering on the board. And right here it says CW filter. So we will just put that in. The holes should all line up. And it just settles right in. And then while I'm holding it in there, I'm going to come over here take my pliers and just put a little more spring in one of those tabs so that they will hold it in place while I get the soldering iron going and we'll have a few points to solder there okay see really easy not a lot involved by the way the uh, switch on the top of the unit has this little black felt that's a dust protector that goes on the switch and the case goes over the top of. Don't lose that. <laughs> when, you, uh, when you take the radio apart, don't lose that. It can fall off and then you'll be looking for it and wondering what you're supposed to, or where it's supposed to go or where it fell. All right, I'm gonna zoom the camera in on these solder pads so you can watch me solder. So as I said before, we've got one, two, three, four pads and the two ground tabs to solder. So the first thing I'm going to do is solder one of the ground tabs. And then I'm going to push on the filter and just make sure it's seated. I felt it move up just a little bit. There we go. All right. Then we'll solder the other ground tab. And our input and output wires on the filter. Well, 
And I don't know if you can see this. What I'm doing is I put the solder on iron on one side of the pin, bring the solder in on the other side of the pin. I just touch a little solder on the iron, touch it to the pin, touch solder in from the other side and draw it straight up. And then I get a nice little conical shape where the solder takes all the way around the pin. Oop. There we go. Our filter is soldered in. Now all we have to do is put things back together in our reverse order. So I'll carefully pivot the board back over, lift it above those little, let me show you these. Now you can see one in that shot. See here how the uh, chassis is bent up and out? That's what the, the uh, board sits on. On the front, those tabs come out of the back of the metal and you wanna make sure you don't tuck the board underneath those tabs. It needs to set on top of those tabs. And make sure you don't get any wires underneath between the board and those tabs. And it should just drop right in. There we go. There's our filter. Now I'm gonna start with the middle screws. And here's another tip. Take your finger and hold the screw on the tip of the screwdriver. I'm putting a little forward force on the screwdriver to sort of wedge it against my the flesh of my fingertip. And that way I can guide it in there like that and not drop it into the radio. I'm not gonna tighten that down yet. It's not even quite snug. I, I, I turned it until I felt it get snug and then I backed it off a little because I might need to shift the board after I get a couple more screws in. Okay, now I'm gonna look at each of the holes in the corners and shift the board slightly if I need to so that it's centered over the holes. And now I'll put in the other corner screws. one up in this corner has a wire in place and covering it so I got to kind of hold the wires out of the place. This is where a magnetic tip screwdriver is handy. All right. And then finally that one that's kind of in the middle of the board here. There we go. Now I'll just tighten all these, snug these all down. No need to crank them super tight, just snug them down. Ah, I keep picking up the chassis. <laughs> Alrighty. Now the two screws at the back that oop, hold this uh, pivoting chassis in place. And one of them rolled under the radio. There it is. Now that we got our board remounted, there's one last step that you need to do. So there's a white wire here. If you trace it back to here on the board, you'll see that there's a blue and a white wire. It's this one and this one. And the blue one is labeled SSB, the white one is labeled CW. And they're plugged in over here in this position that's labeled wide. So we need to unhook that. Pull the wire out of the connector. It's a little single pin connector. Okay. And over here, next to the optional filters, there's some pins right here that are labeled SSB and CW. So I want to move this white wire over to there and plug it into one of those pins that says CW. Doesn't matter which one, they both go to the same place. They give you two pins in case you wanted to install two different narrow CW filters. There we go.
All right, we're almost done. I need to plug the speaker back in. This plug is polarized. It'll only go one way. So if it doesn't go easy, you're probably putting it in the wrong way and you need to flip it around. But usually the wires are bent in the direction that the cord was going when it was plugged in, so you can't really get it backwards. There we go. Now, remember that felt? It goes over the switch right here. See how easy that is to lose? If you, if you don't take that off and you flip the radio over, you'll lose that felt and you'll spend some time looking for it. So it goes over that switch and then watch the speaker wire. Don't catch it on the sides of the case or anything. And we just, with it at an angle, we just sort of slide the front lip in and it goes right down. And that's it. I'll put the screws back in, we'll take it upstairs, and we'll see how this filter performs. Alright, we're here on uh, 20 meters at the moment, and uh, I'm trying to find some... There's some weak CW, I'm trying to find something a little clearer. I can hear just him. Now you can hear two of them. Now we can't hear the other guy, you see. Two stations directly beside each other. And I can listen to just the one that passes through the filter. So that'll make operating CW a lot easier. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.